three-man defensive front. Wallace from the gun. Commodores bring the blitz. The pass over the middle is incomplete. The pass is incomplete. Vanderbilt takes over. And the black and gold section across the way. And the Commodores sideline are up. He's got the beginning. Celebrate Commodore Nation. It's never happened before. For the second consecutive season, the Vanderbilt Commodores are bowl eligible. The Ole Miss Rebels will march into Vanderbilt Stadium Thursday night with the hopes of breaking a two-game losing streak to the Vanderbilt Commodores. Both teams improved dramatically last season and will be looking to jumpstart their 2013 season with a win. So will it be revenge for the Ole Miss Rebels or another repeat for the Vanderbilt Commodores? The Vanderbilt Commodores have been very good at home under James Franklin where they have posted a record of 9-4 and four over the past two seasons. The Commodores were 5-2 and two in 2011 at home with their two losses being against nationally ranked Arkansas and Georgia and by a combined total of 8 points as both games came down to the last play. In 2012, they were 4-2 and two, with their only losses being to South Carolina and Florida who both finished the season ranked in the top 10. The Gamecocks needed a controversial no-call, and Florida was only up a touchdown with two minutes to go. Can the Vanderbilt Commodores keep up their magic at Vanderbilt Stadium? The Commodores suffered a major blow to their passing game with the recent suspension of standout wide receiver Chris Boyd, who caught 50 passes for 774 yards and five touchdowns. 82 times this past season he was targeted, which equaled out to 24.8% of all passes were thrown his way. While the Commodores might be able to place Boyd's statistics, his cuts play will be much more difficult. Boyd had a knack for making the big plays at the most crucial times, like his game-winning touchdown last season against Ole Miss. Instead of replacing Boyd on this week's depth chart, the Commodores have dropped the third wide receiver spot and added fullback Fitz Lassing in his place. On paper, the Rebels enter the game with a decisive advantage at the quarterback position with junior Bo Wallace at the helm. Wallace fell just six yards short of the 3,000-yard passing mark last season while throwing 22 touchdowns and rushing for an additional eight touchdowns. Ole Miss fans only have two concerns about Wallace, and both could be related. Wallace separated his throwing shoulder early in the season and played with the injury for the rest of last season. And while Wallace should improve on his impressive numbers from last season, he must do a better job of not turning the football over. Wallace had 17 interceptions last season, including seven in his final three games. However, all of those interceptions came after his injury in Week 2 versus Tulane, and his off-season shoulder surgery has Ole Miss fans hopeful that he'll be able to cut down on the turnovers and lead Ole Miss to the next level. Austin Carter Samuels will be the quarterback at Vanderbilt, and while he's only attempted 25 passes in the SEC, he has thrown for over 3,800 yards in his career. Cardo Samuel started his career for the Wyoming Cowboys, where he led them to a bowl win and was named Mountain West Conference Freshman of the Year. Camp Carter Samuels passed for 1,953 yards and 10 touchdowns and 5 interceptions as a freshman and 1,702 yards, 9 touchdowns, and 8 interceptions as a sophomore before transferring to Vanderbilt. In this game, it could come down to which quarterback makes the least mistakes and which quarterback can make the right play in the final seconds of the game. The past two seasons, I have correctly predicted the winner of 93% of all games played by SEC teams. However, the most difficult games to predict are those that are played in the first two weeks of the season because all the circumstances that are left unanswered. And no games are more difficult to predict this week than Ole Miss and Vanderbilt. And while the teams are very close on paper and both teams return many starters, I'm going to give Vanderbilt a slight edge solely based on the fact that I believe they'll make more plays in the special teams, and I believe they also will once again have a strong home field advantage. Vanderbilt has played above their head every game at Vanderbilt Stadium since James Franklin has arrived as head coach. <laughs>